Hey everyone, it's Byron. I'm here to testify for Jesus Christ. I just want to real quickly put a trailer in front of a video. Um, I had an experience this weekend in which I ran into someone I hadn't seen in a long time. And after the person was around me for a little bit, looked at me and said, you're all right. But they said it in such a way that made me realize they were worried about me. Okay, And it led me to think how uh, being called out, uh, how being part of a royal priesthood, how, having heard from the Lord and to be pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, how we're different. And we need to understand that we're different, we're peculiar. We need to understand that. And by doing so, we can lessen the impact of standing out and being different and being told, well, maybe you're okay, maybe you're not. Um, lessen the impact that will have on us so that we can walk the walk that we need to walk for Jesus Christ. Here goes a video that I did. I was coughing terribly. I chopped it up to get some coughs out. So it's a little choppy, but bear with me. Thanks. When you are called out, you're not going to be like you were. You're not going to speak like you did. You're not going to walk like you did. You're not going to talk like you did. Scripturally speaking, the Bible says our conversation is in heaven. Paul tells us to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And he says, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, and, and that perfect, let's just go to the Greek and explain it real quick. Perfect is complete, and that means mature. That's the word that I, I, I pick. Full of age, a man, perfect. It means to be perfect. So it says, press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, as many as be uh, a man, as many as be mature, a mature person in Christ, be thus minded. And he says, and, and if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So let me just say this. Let's say that you are maturing or you're mature, pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God. But there's some little part of your life that's not come within the way the Lord wants it or the way we should be. He says, he says that God will reveal this to you. And he's revealed those things to me. So if God is speaking to me, if he has called me out. I'm one of his. I'm a child of the king. I'm hearing from him. He's moving me on to perfection. That is moving me on to maturity. I have become full age or mature. And then other little areas that I may be having trouble in, he's even revealing this. If you even be otherwise minded in anything, he's going to reveal that to you as well. So let me, let me go on and, and, and just, just wrap this up real quick with the scripture. Then I'll talk some more. It says, nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same things. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk as you have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. The whole purpose of grabbing all these verses right here was to get to the word conversation and mention that our conversation is in heaven. And let's highlight that by going to the, the Greek and let's look at conversation. This is abbreviated, um, an abbreviated description. But it says, our community, that is abstractly our citizenship. We don't belong here. We belong in heaven. The things that we talk about are different. 
The things that we think about are different. We don't mind these earthly things. We've been separated. We've been called out. So if my conversation If the way I go about thinking, if the way I go about talking, if the way I go about uh, living my life is on heavenly things and not on these earthly things of these people whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame, and they mind those earthly things, if that's it, and even if there's a part of my life where God is still working on me and he's revealed to me, Byron, you got to clean this up too. We are different. We've been called out. Abraham, he was called out from his home country, pulled out by God. And Abraham went for, for the most part, my understanding of scripture, for the rest of his life, searching for a city that was not made by human hand, searching for Zion, searching for the new Jerusalem. Noah, I'm excuse me. No, um, Moses, he was among the Egyptians. He killed an Egyptian because he beat up one of his Hebrew brothers. Moses left. He was out of Egypt. He wasn't like those Egyptians that raised him anymore. He was off by himself, off to himself. While he was off to himself, he had the burning bush experience. God communicated to him, just like the scripture says, that God will communicate with you because it says, and if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this to you. Just as he revealed something to Moses at the burning bush. You may not see a burning bush, but it will be revealed to you. I've had things revealed to me in dreams. I've had, had things revealed to me by people. I believe people who God supernaturally imputed a word from him to me. So when I had this experience with this person and they were, they were like, hmm, I, I guess you're okay. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, my conversation is not in his world. I don't belong to his world anymore. My conversation is in heaven. The things that I talk about, the things that I live for, the way that I, I go about thinking, my attributes, everything, because I have been called out. I have been separated into the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have been changed. Um, Tears. This is what we are. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That ye show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness. Called you out into his marvelous life. Now, we got to understand that there, there's a there's a there's a growing process in the Lord. There's a maturation process. There's a point in which you can become born again and not be perfected, as we talked about, a full man, a man in Christ, in the Lord. But He wants us to keep going, keep pressing toward the mark. So, as I mentioned, Abraham was called out. It was the land of Ur. No, uh, he was called out. He walked. He's the father of our faith. He's the original person who walked by faith, looking for a city made without human hands. Moses called out, had his period of time by the burning bush. Elijah called out, went to Mount Horeb after he left the juniper tree, went to Mount Horeb. Where he was supernaturally fed by God. Supernaturally told by God on Mount Horeb certain things in a still small voice. The very things I'm talking about. I'm telling you this now. You have people out here in this world 
who will step into your path along this journey. They don't understand what you're talking about. They don't understand where you're coming from. They don't know the journey you're on. They don't know what it's like to be called out. Many are called and few are chosen. Well, right here, Peter says, but ye are a chosen generation. Many are called. They perhaps sat in the same worship service with you, heard the same message, didn't get chosen. But they heard the call. Scripture tells us we were we were chosen from the foundations of the world. And now we live in this life, we live in this world, surrounded by apostasy. Surrounded time by end times false prophetesses and profiteers and prophets. We live in this time where many people have a form of godliness in that they could look acceptable, uh, but they literally deny the power of God. And they deny, they would, they would even question the capability of God to communicate to you. If you have been chosen, but you haven't moved on to maturity, all these people in your way can can propose a problem. And they've posed problems for me. And just, here's what I was going to think about earlier. Uh, but but just like um, you would you would say, I'm part of the chosen people. I'm part of a chosen generation. Um, these other people are part of those not chosen. You can go back in scriptures and you can look when um, Jacob and Esau had their problems. Scripture tells us that Jacob have I loved, yet Esau have I hated. Jacob was chosen he was the child of promise Esau was not that's by election of God Um, similarly when um, Abraham and Sarah got together and decided well let, let me give you my handmaid and you have a son that son was not chosen that son was not the child of promise promise later Abraham and Sarah gave birth to Isaac and Ishmael who was the first son by the handmaid Ishmael had to go he was not chosen and Paul talks about that in Romans in Romans I think it's around chapter 9 hath not the potter over the clay Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another vessel unto dishonor. And Paul goes on right there when he's talking about that. He says he would, that that God would be patient and tolerate the vessels, such as this verse is talking about, of dishonor to prove a point. He raised Pharaoh in Egypt. He tolerated Pharaoh, raised up Pharaoh just so that God could prove his power to the whole world. And he did so. So these people who come up, they don't understand. They don't know. Maybe they haven't answered the call. Maybe they, unfortunately, maybe they weren't chosen. But they're going to come into your life. They're going to cross your path and all this stuff. You have to realize this is part of your life. But you can't allow that to have huge impacts, so much so that impedes your walk with the Lord and what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to let you go, man. This this all came from uh, somebody I hadn't seen in so long. Um, suddenly, it seemed like they, they somehow they were elected to be someone who, almost like a psychologist, like, you know, well, you seem okay. You know? Like I thought you were not okay. They don't know. They don't understand. They don't see. They don't see these things that are going on. So anyway, I'm gonna let you go and see you.